In the early September of 1977, NASA launched one of their most iconic missions, Voyager 1. Launched with its twin, Voyager 2, it became the first spacecraft to reach interstellar space. Its original mission was to explore the outer planets of our solar system, but it has remained operational long past expectations and continues to send information to Earth to this day. Although it was launched after its twin, Voyager 2, it was the first to reach both Jupiter and Saturn. Both spacecraft took advantage of an alignment of the planets that happens once every 175 years to travel from planet to planet. Using the gravity of other planets, Voyager 1 was able to slingshot from one planet to another, speeding up its travel time immensely. Two weeks after its launch, Voyager 1 pointed its camera back to Earth and captured the first spacecraft image of the Earth and its moon. From an incredible distance of 7.25 million miles away, our home planet and our neighbouring moon can be seen hanging in the vacuum of space. It was the first time both objects were captured in a single frame. On January 6, 1979, almost two years after its original launch, Voyager 1 reached the colossal planet of Jupiter. It began sending back images and executing scientific experiments at a distance of 165 million miles away from the Earth. While still approaching the planet, it flew at 262,000 miles of one of Jupiter's smaller inner moons, Amalthea, taking the first close-up image of the moon. It revealed it to be an oblong object that was reddish in appearance. In fact, it's the reddest object in the solar system and strangely it gives off more heat than it receives from the sun. Five hours later, Voyager 1 made its closest approach to the gas giant Jupiter, flying within 174,000 miles of the planet's cloud tops. As it rapidly approached Jupiter, it took images of the planet far more detailed than anything that could be seen from Earth. This time-lapse of Voyager 1's approach shows the swirling clouds of ammonia ice over a period of 60 Jupiter days. As it flew over, it captured some truly majestic images of Jupiter's atmosphere. The iconic three centuries old Great Red Spot was imaged with never before seen detail, and it was discovered to be a huge anticyclonic storm that the Earth could easily fit inside. On its outbound journey from Jupiter, it turned its attention to the largest Jovian satellites. At a closest distance of only 12,800 miles, it photographed and studied the volcanic moon of Io. During this time, it learnt one of its most interesting discoveries, an active volcano on the surface of Io. This discovery helped prove to scientists that moons are capable of having differentiated interiors and liquid mantles just like planets. It also discovered that Io had very few impact craters, signifying its extreme volcanism and its ever-changing surface. When looking at the frozen moon of Europa, its stripy appearance from likely tectonic activity was noted, bolstering the modern hypothesis that Europa features an underground ocean and could be an ideal place to search for life in our solar system. High resolution images of the second largest Jovian moon, Callisto, were also collected, detailing a region of the moon known as the Valhalla Impact Basin and many more impact craters and damaged terrains. The brighter areas along the surface of this moon are believed to contain more clean ice than the rest of its generally dirty ice surface. Ganymede, the largest moon in the solar system, which is bigger than the smallest planet Mercury, was also imaged. Furrows along the surface were revealed in ring-like patterns centered at a single point, which are believed to be the remains of an ancient giant crater. During Voyager 1's journey through the Jupiter system, it also remarkably discovered two new moons. They were later named Thebe and Matisse. They're both incredibly small moons that are unable to achieve hydrostatic equilibrium and become spherical in shape. As Voyager 1 concluded its observations of Jupiter in April of 1979, it looked back on the immense planet 
and observed that Jupiter actually has a ring system as well as Saturn, making it the second planet known to have rings. Voyager 1 then set off on a long journey through the harsh environment of space to reach the second largest planet of the solar system, Saturn. It began its encounters with the beautiful planet in November of 1980 and set about to image and start its scientific experiments of the planet and its moons. One target that Voyager 1 set out to study was the F-ring of Saturn, a thin ring that had only been discovered a year before by the Pioneer 11 spacecraft. During its study, it discovered three more moons that orbit the planet and a new ring named the G-ring. These new moons were eventually named Prometheus, Pandora and Atlas. Prometheus and Pandora were found to be shepherd moons as they actually keep the debris that makes up the F-ring in a defined orbit. One puzzle and the primary question that arose from Voyager 1 studying the Saturn system was that of its largest moon, Titan. When imaged, astronomers were presented with an incredibly dense atmosphere pictured here. The surface of the Earth-like moon was unable to be seen from space and this intrigued scientists enough to eventually send the Huygens lander to Titan to see what lurked beneath the methane clouds. After studying Saturn, Voyager 1 gathered enough speed thanks to a gravity assist to be able to leave the solar system. As it made its journey through our solar system, astrophysicist Carl Sagan requested to NASA that Voyager 1 turn around and look back towards our home. This incredible image of our home planet has been named the Pale Blue Dot. Earth can be seen here, hanging in a beam of light. It was taken on February 14, 1990, at a distance of 3.7 billion miles away. Voyager 1 also used this opportunity to image the other planets in our solar system from a spectacular distance of 6 billion kilometres. It made the first family portrait of our solar system. It's a mosaic of 60 individual frames, indicating all of the planet's relative positions around the Sun. Voyager 1 kept travelling through the solar system at incredible speeds until August of 2012 when it crossed through the heliopause, the boundary between the heliosphere, a bubble-like region of space created by the Sun and the interstellar medium. As of September 17th, 2020, Voyager is an astonishing 14 billion miles away from the Earth and continues travelling rapidly away. It is the furthest man-made object from Earth and continues to send back information about the interstellar medium and send the legacy of humanity into the cosmos. It's predicted that Voyager 1 will carry on sending information back to Earth until 2025 before it eventually runs out of power. Then it will keep travelling on its silent journey for another 40,000 years before it reaches another star. Thanks for watching. What spacecraft missions would you like to learn more about? Be sure to leave a like and comment any questions you have, and be sure to subscribe to keep up with more videos coming soon.